If you're familiar with the Neon Airship channel, then you'll know I'm all about DIY electronics. You might also know that I'm pretty into skateboarding. So of course I've been toying around with the idea of building an electric skateboard for quite a while now. The problem has always come when I total up the cost of the components. This stuff gets really expensive. So after a lot of research, I found I could get more for my money by buying pre-built. And hey, we can always take it apart and repurpose the components, right? So without further ado, here's what I decided to buy. And in my opinion, it's the best electric skateboard deal on the planet right now. There's a lot to love about the X-Way X1, but the real kicker here is the price. Using a combination of discount codes, I was able to pick this up brand new for about £295, or £390 for you Americans. What's more, mine shipped from Europe, so it arrived in just three or four working days. Now, two little things to note here. The X1 is often out of stock, but they do restock it. If you message them on Facebook, they're very responsive, and I believe the stock usually drops on a Friday. Secondly, exchange rates are all over the place thanks to this virus outbreak at the minute. So if you time it right, you can get maximum bang for your buck. But either way, I think you're going to get a pretty good deal. I used the discount codes in the description below. Code DK1 from YouTuber Daniel Kwan, who's actually well worth checking out if you're into electric skateboards. Sexually mature. And Xway 40 New, which is a code for first time buyers on the Xway site. This brought the price down by about $60 from $449 to $389. In addition to this, instead of using PayPal to convert from pounds to dollars, I used the Revolut app to get a really good exchange rate and pay in USD. I'm not affiliated with Revolut in any way, but I do really like their service. It's all free and it saved me a ton of money when traveling abroad. If you decide to try it, there's a link in the description that gives me a nice little kickback. Now onto the board itself. If you're into electric boards, no doubt you'll be familiar with the X1. It's been around for a couple of years and caused quite a stir initially by going head to head with Boosted on performance for about half the price. The fact that it's been out for quite a while is certainly part of the reason it's so affordable now. The X1's battery is built into the board, giving it a sleek and stealthy look. It also uses hub motors, so there's no bulky motor bells hanging off the back, and to the layman it looks like a normal longboard. That is, until they see you shooting up a hill at 20 miles per hour. The hub motors also have the distinct benefit of being easy to push, so if your battery does die, you can push home without too much difficulty. The downside to this type of motor is you sacrifice some ride comfort, as there's less urethane between the hub and the road compared to a normal longboard wheel. X-Way kindly include an extra set of urethane sleeves in the box though, so when you do eventually wear these down, you're well covered. The board is also very lightweight compared to its competitors, coming in at just 6.4 kilos. In fact, it's not that much heavier than my non-motorized longboard setup, which is an Omen airship with Holy Trucks and ABEC 11 Strikers. It's pretty old now, but it still works. The deck is built in a downhill style, very stiff with lots of concave. It gives you confidence at high speeds, but it vibrates your feet a fair bit if you're on the rough stuff. It's not much of a change for me as I'm used to my airship, but I welcome these wheel cutouts. It's been a long time since I had those, and it's nice to be able to do some really deep carves without worrying about the wheel bite. A big part of my decision to buy from X-Way is that they seem to have their finger on the pulse when it comes to longboarding. They're affiliated with some legit downhill riders, and they use proper hardware. The X1 uses seismic Aeon trucks, which by themselves go for about 60 pounds in the UK. I've got massive respect for seismic, They've been around since 1993, and they have a reputation for developing innovative skate products. I've ridden their Tecton bearings on my longboard, and they are by far the fastest I've ever tried. I remember when I first started skating in the late 90s, they had these super weird trucks that used a spring system instead of bushings. I was always fascinated by them, but I unfortunately never got to try them. The Aeons on the X1 use a unique triangular bushing. I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what the benefit of this is, but it's certainly different, and it seems to work great. The X1 has four speed settings that you can choose on the remote, but let's ignore the three slower ones because where's the fun in that? I haven't actually reached the stated top speed of 25 miles per hour yet. It doesn't sound that fast, but trust me, on a longboard on flat ground, that feels like plenty. It gets there very quick too. To be fair, this is my first electric skateboard, so my only real basis for comparison is M365 scooter. I briefly tried a boosted board at a trade show but they must have had it in some noob mode because the speed on this is absolutely staggering. 
Even on a fairly steep incline, it can get up to around 80 miles per hour, and I weigh over 200 pounds. Comparatively, the M365 will slow right down to a crawl. My only real complaint is the range. Going reasonably quick, you can expect this to last for about five miles. I'd estimate it's about half the range of the M365. However, you'll get where you're going a lot quicker, and you'll have more fun on the way. To be fair to X-Way, they addressed this by releasing the X1 Pro, with a drastically increased range, but you do have to pay for the privilege. I think for most people this range will be enough, but you'll definitely be keeping the charger handy. Speaking of the charger, X-Way's MagSafe connector is a really nice touch. Charging time isn't that bad either, taking about 2 hours from 20% battery, which is as low as I've run it. They even include an adapter to charge your phone or the remote from the board's battery if you get really desperate in a pinch. You can also buy a quick charger separately that shortens the charge time to about 35 minutes, which is pretty nifty, but the standard charger serves me just fine at the moment. Most of the electrical components are hidden underneath the grip tape, and while the standard grip is pretty tasteful, I wanted to customise mine a bit, so I took the opportunity to do a bit of a teardown. The standard grip comes off nice and easily with a little blast from the heat gun. Underneath you'll find a metal carbon fibre looking panel with lots of Phillips head screws. Take this off and you'll have access to the massive but very thin LiPo pack and the motherboard and ESC. I decided not to take things apart any further as they seem pretty well sealed from the elements and are mostly double sided taped in place. Honestly I would have preferred this panel to be on the base of the board for easier access but having it under the grip does make for a very sleek look so I kind of get why they did it. Plus, all being well, it's not something you should really need to access that frequently. For my grip job, I used a combination of this mental Enjoy Cat and Rainbow grip and some classic black Vicious grip. The Vicious is to keep me locked in at high speeds and the Enjoy tape is, well, just look at it, it's glorious. Anyway, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed something a little different from the usual tutorial type content. Let me know if you want to see more electric skateboard stuff. I'm having a blast with this one. I'd be keen to play with some others too. Or build one, of course. Toodles.